Hi everyone, it's me Grace. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far. Today I'm going to be creating some Amanita Muscaria mushroom wall sculptures. Mushrooms are so precious and I thought it would be really cute to create some wall sculptures that look like mushrooms were growing out of my walls. To start making my first mushroom, I'm taking a rectangular piece of black warbla, heating it up with a heat gun, and rolling it into a cylinder shape. This will serve as the mushroom stem. Then I'm pressing a long screw into the base. This will be the spot where it screws into the wall. I'm curving the stem of the mushroom out a little bit so it'll have enough room for the mushroom cap when it's attached to the wall. Using the heat gun again, I'm warming the surface so I can carve in some details with a sculpting tool. I find that this helps the stem look more organic and gives it more depth. For the mushroom's ring, I'm cutting out a circle-shaped piece of warbler, heating it up, and draping it over the stem. Then I can use my fingers as a sculpting tool to make the frills. Now it's time to create the cap. I fuse two layers of warbler together with a heat gun. I cut them into a circular shape and cut darts into them to create a more dramatic dome shape. After shaping them with my hands to get the desired look, I draped another piece of warbler over the cap, smoothing the seams in the process. I also tucked the edges under the cap. To create the gills, I warmed the inside of the cap and carved the gills in with a sculpting tool. I added a bit more warbler over the ring so the cap wouldn't completely cover the frills after being assembled. I warmed the stem and the cap again and fused them together. I scored the pieces with my sculpting tool to ensure they would stick together. To create the scales, I cut up little pieces of warbler left over from making the other pieces. I'm placing them inside of this roll of tape on my table so they won't blow away when I'm warming them. After they're warmed, I'm rolling them into scale shapes and pressing them onto the cap. For this first mushroom, I'm making the scales look more circular and bold. Once the scales are on, the sculpture's construction is complete. I decided to add some industrial glue to the base of the stem and the screw area. This was just to give these two pieces some extra strength. Now it's time to paint it. I picked out some white, brown, and red acrylic paints. I mixed the brown and the white together to get a light beige color. I'm using this paint to cover the stem, ring, and gills. I mix together a darker beige for the low lights and creases. I use whites for the highlights and ridges. This cap is going to be a classic Amanita red. The scales I painted are both white and beige in color. And with that, the first mushroom is done. I decided to make a second, smaller mushroom as well. I feel like this one went a lot faster since I was used to making the first one already. For the scales, I decided to go with more of an ovaly shape. I think I prefer this style over the rounded scales. But what do you think? Which one's your favorite? Once the mushrooms were dry, it's time to attach them to the wall. I decided to put them in my kitchen because that's where a lot of my mushroom accessories already live. I decided above the chalkboard was a perfect place for them. I installed some drywall anchors first and then screwed the sculptures into the wall. And I couldn't be more pleased with my little Amanita mushrooms. I like how it looks like they're growing out of the wall. It makes me want to make even more of them. This week's Maker of the Week is Emma Yu from my Patreon Discord. She made this gorgeous armor set Craftsmanship is awesome, and this photo turned out so lovely, don't you think? If y'all are interested in showing me what you're making, I would love to see it. I'm Zombies Workshop on both Twitter and Instagram. And if you're looking for something to read while you're stuck inside, I do hope you'll consider ordering a copy of my book, The Cosplay Handbook. It's available as a paperback on Amazon.com and as an ebook on my website. Until next time, everyone, bye!